Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Yasser Ahmed. Today we're going to be looking at chapter 18, data manipulation. So this is a database chapter which is from the paper 2 practical examination. So we're going to be looking at different features including the database structure, looking at data types, fields and records, how to import a CSV file, then we're going to be looking at formatting the data types, creating relationships between the tables, adding or editing existing records, creating a drop down menu, creating a data entry form and a combo box, annotating exam paper, the query and report questions including the use of search criteria, creating labels, creating a summary query and the extract. So what is a database? A database is a collection of data or information stored in a logical format. So we can hold data on paper, so we can have a paper based database or we can have a computer based database. So Let's have a look at the paper base for example. So the disadvantage would be if you're holding information on paper it would be difficult to search and sort information. It would take up more physical storage space so if you have a folder full of paper you'd have to file it into a cabinet which would take up more space. And it would also be difficult to make copies or to edit data. And also data could easily be lost if it was held on paper as well. So a typical example would be a doctor's surgery use of a paper-based database. Each patient would have their information stored in a folder which, which would be kept in a filing cabinet. Now normally the most common method of holding data is on a computer. So the computer-based database allows for information to be organized in such a way that a computer program can quickly select specific pieces of data. An example of a database package is Microsoft Access. The computer database is made up of tables, records and fields. So the advantage of having data on a computer based database is using specific search criteria data can easily be found. There's no need for physical storage space as data or as vast amount of data can be held on a computer. So we don't need to have a filing cabinet to store records. It's easier to edit and to create copies of data so the database can easily be backed up. Reports can easily be generated based on specific records. So in a computer based database we have tables. So a table in a database would be created to store specific pieces of data and number of records. So first of all suitable field names will have to have to be created and then fields will contain specific data for each record. So let's look at this example here. So a customer sales database will contain many records. So a record will be each customer. Okay, Fields will store specific data for each customer. So for example, a customer name. So we've created a table here. We have many different fields. Fields contain specific data for each record. So for example, a customer ID, customer name, address details. Now for each field, we have to have a specific data type. So a data type could be text, which includes letters and numbers number so this is an um, integer value a whole number double this contains decimal numbers a currency value um, date and time boolean and OLE object so the boolean would be used for yes or no fields an OLE object would contain um, a field which contains pictures so to create a new table you'd click on view design view okay and then you can write in the field names and select data types so let's look at the next example. We have a movie database. So what we need to know is data types, fields and records. So each movie in the database is a record. So in total we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six different records. So each movie is a record. Now for each record we have fields which contain specific data for each record. So we have whether it's in stock or not. So that would be yes or no which is a boolean field. The date of release which would be in a date and time format, the price of the movie which would be held as currency, um, the duration in minutes which would be a whole number and then we got a text fields as well which include letters and numbers so the code, the movie name, the genre and the actors. So we've got the different fields here, different data types down here and each movie is a record. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. So if I zoom back out again. 
In a typical database exam question, you will be asked to import a CSV file into a suitable database package. So the package we're going to be using is Microsoft Access. In a new syllabus, you'd normally have to import two or three tables and then create the relationships between the tables. So let's have a look at this exam question in a little bit more detail. So the first part of the question is asking us, again, using a suitable database package, import the file s16cars.csv. So if I open up Access, you first need to click on External Data, Text File, and then you need to click on Browse to select this CSV file. So it's going to be S16 Cars. As you can see, it's a comma separated values file. Then you click on Next. Now you have to tick this box because as you can see, the first row here contains field names. Okay. Once you tick this box, you need to go to Advanced. At this point here, you will check the data types. Now, I'm purposely going to make a mistake because I want you to see what happens if you don't check the data types or the date if it's not in the right order. So if I leave this as it is and click on Next, Next, we we'll go back to the question. Set the VIN as a key field. So what is the key field? This will be the unique field for each record. The VIN will be the primary key as each car will have a different uh, or unique VIN number. So we can select this as a primary key. If you have to select any other field, you can just simply select from this option here. Next, finish. And when I press finish, I'm expecting to see some mistakes. Okay. And then we'll explain why we had those mistakes. So as you can see, we've got some input errors. So if I go to this table here, we've got information missing. Then if I go to this table here, the input errors, you can see it's on the engine size. So why did we get those import errors? I'm just going to close this information down. I'm going to delete these two records or tables. Okay. And I'll explain why we got the import errors. So if I open up the table, let's look at engine size. So as you can see, the values held within this field are numerical. So the integer values. If I go down, you can still see its um, integer values. However, if I keep going, you'll notice it changes. So we've got um, text values at the bottom in this field. So if I close this down, because you can't have it open when you import, and if we go back to access, if I click on text file again to import my CSV, so external data, text file, browse, and select S16 cars. When you get to this point here and you tick first row contains fields, this is a very important stage. Okay, you need to check. So let me go back to here. The tip is double check the data types. So you have the data types here. They have to be correct or you may get import errors as we got. Okay, so I've highlighted two of the fields in particular. So the first field that we normally change is a Boolean field. So dispatched will be displayed in the report as yes or no. At the moment, dispatch is displayed as minus one or zero. So if I go to advance, I'm going to click on dispatch and change the data type to a Boolean. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is check all of the other data types. So the VIN, model and power should be text. Yeah, VIN is text, models text, power is text. Now the engine size, should also be text because remember we also include NA. But the reason we got the import errors is it set us long integer. Okay, so the NA was not able to go into this um, into these records. So you need to change this to text. Where's text now? Um, here we go. Okay, text or short text depending on which version you're using. So now that this is set as text, it can take numbers or uh, letters. The cost price is going to be currency, but I'm going to change that later in design view. And the color and the distributor will be text. So we can keep these two the same. And the last thing you should check as well is to ensure the date and time appears in a correct format. Okay, so it should be the UK format, which is day, month and year. So you may have to change the format. Okay, so make sure it's day, month, and year shown at this point here. 
click OK. Then we can click on Next, Next. And again, we can select the VIN as the primary key. Next. And I'm not expecting to see any errors now. If I click on Finish, Close. As you can see, all the data has been imported, especially in the engine size. Um, num numerical values and letters has been imported into the engine size because we set this field now as text. Okay, so before we move on to and import the second table, um, let me change the formatting. So now the cost price will be displayed in a currency format. So have a look at the question paper to see what format. Is it dollars? Is it pounds? Is it euros? So to format this, we go to design view. If we click on cost price and then we can change the format to currency. And then we can select two decimal places. And then this patch, we can also change up to yes and no. So if you click on it, click on view, that's also changed to yes and no. Sometimes they may ask you specifically to display this as a box. So you can change this to um, a checkbox if that was the case. Okay, but you obviously would have to read the question on the report, on the question paper to see how they want you to show this so i want this to be shown as a text so we go to the question yep display as yes and no okay now let me import the second table so the s16 distributors table so if i save this table and click on external data text file again to import the csv file browse we want to import the distributors table okay next Again, the first row contains fields, and if you look across, all the information is shown as text. So we don't need to change anything, okay? So if you click on Advanced, yep, it should be text. So there's no dates, so we don't need to look at this. Next, next. Again, we can choose our own primary key. So the primary key will be the distributor code field as a key field. Next, and finish. So we've imported two tables here. So I'm going to click on save. Okay, let me just zoom out a little bit again. So to import, you know, just to recap, you click on external uh, data tab and then text file. Then you have to browse and select the CSV file. At this point, you can go to advanced and ch change the date, month and year, or we can do it at this point here. So we can click on first row contains fields then we can go to advanced. I would recommend if you change the formatting of the date here, if it's incorrect, change the data type. So check all of the data types, especially the Boolean field. If you don't change the Boolean field now, then you won't be able to change the settings later. Okay. Then you'd have to select the primary key. So if it's asking specifically select that particular field, sometimes it may ask you not to include a primary key so you can select the second or the last option, no primary key. Then you can click next and finish to import a CSV file. Okay, now we're going to be looking at a question paper from 2015. This is from the old syllabus, but I think it's worth going through this question as it's slightly different to the one we just done previously. So in this, in this exam question, you'll have to first create the table, including fields and data types, and then import the CSV file into the table we created. So what the question is asking us to do, if we zoom in a little bit, create a database with the following field names and data types. So what you'll have to do is go to create, click on table, then click on view and design view. Then we'll have to write in the name of the CSV file, which we'll later we'll have to import into the table. So M15PRODS. And then we'll have to create the field names. Once we've done this, and the second part of this task is we have to append the CSV file to the table we have just created. So the reason we are having to do this, if I open up the CSV file initially, you'll notice at the top we're missing the field names. Okay, so this has only come up once before, but I think it's really important you know what to do if a question like this comes up again. So if I go back to here, so the first thing we have to do to create the table if I open up um, this one here is to click on create table 
then click on view and then put the name of the table in or the name of the CSV file which we will be importing so n15 and then prods and what you'd have to do is basically write down the field names the code country okay I'm not going to do the whole table because I got one I made earlier okay and then you'd have to select the appropriate data types so the first field is set as integer then the next one will be set as text so we can select a number and then text now if I go to the one I made earlier you can see I've typed in all of the field names and I've selected data types according to the exam paper when we are importing a CSV file into this table we don't have to change the data types as they've been set here okay as you can see if you click on a uh, view again there's no content in this table we now need to import the information into this table so to import the CSV file into the table close it down click on text file if you go to browse select the file we want to import in this case we have to append a copy so if you go back to the PowerPoint slide um, you can see we want to append a copy of the CSV file into the table which we just created now so the table is called M15 prods okay click on next be careful not to select this option here because you'll notice the first row is not field names we don't need to change anything here because the data types have been set already so we can go to next and finish if I open up this table you will now see we have field names at the top and the data has been imported into this table here so this question only appeared once in 2015 um, that's one way of doing it another way you could do this is um, let me just close this down I don't need to have this open now so if the question asked you to create a database what you could do also is if you open up this Excel file is insert a row and then you can write in the field names here so for example you got code country and this might be the easier method and then you just import the CSV file as normal so if you are missing the field names maybe you can create the table and append a copy of the CSV file to that table or you can open up the CSV file and add the field names and then import it as normal right so let's move on to the next slide okay so print screen evidence so normally they do ask you to print screen showing the field names and data types used in your evidence um, used in your evidence document so what you'd have to print screen is the data structure here sometimes some people would be confused and they would just print screen this so if you are doing a print screens you have to go to design view and print screen this and maybe you also want to show this as well and it's worth taking a print screen for each table okay let's go to the next slide the formatting is also really important as well um, make sure you know which currency to use um, sometimes they tell you at the top of the, of the exam paper and they are specific in which currency they want you to use okay so in this exam question here for example they said the values will be in pounds so we have to use this currency here the pound sign also anything that's going to be decimal place when you are importing leave it as double okay and then later in design view you can change it to a particular setting so if for example the length here will be to one decimal place when you do import leave it as double okay then go to design view and then you can select the one decimal place sometimes you may have to select for the format standard to show it as one decimal place okay let's now look at um, relationships so a relational database is one that contains two or more tables of data connected by key fields so in the example we have here we have two tables okay so we, the VIN is the key field here 
and the distributor code is a key field here. Okay, let's go to normal view. So we have a typical relationship which is known as one to many. So the best example is you'd have one teacher in a classroom teaching many students. Okay, a relational database has more than one table and the tables are linked by using key fields which are the primary keys. So the reason we have a relationship in this case would be teacher details only need to be entered once into the database. So the teacher details will only appear once in this table here. Mistakes are less likely to happen when entering data if it already exists. Avoids duplicating of data. Data can be accessed using key fields, primary keys and foreign keys. Queries and reports can be created using fields from a number of different tables. So if we just had one table, then all of this information would have to be duplicated into this um, other table as well. Because we can separate the data. So if I look at this example here, now the distributors only appear once. So that's one record for this distributor. This is another distributor. Okay, we're going to make a link to this table here. Imagine if the data was in one table, then basically, as you can see, you've got this distributor here. The information would have to be repeated for each record. So if we can make the link using the key fields, we don't need to duplicate this data. Um, we can only have it appearing once in this table here. So let's go to the next slide. Okay. To create a relationship, okay, you first need to know the key fields. Okay. What you need to identify is or is the data the same in both the fields? So let's look at the salesperson code, for example. You can see codes ALA, BJO, HHA, YAH. Okay, this is a primary key. And this will be the foreign key because you can see the data here appears as the same as this data here. Okay. Let's look at the next example. So we, in this case, we have three different tables. So the author code is the primary key. Okay, and it can be linked to this um, field here, the author ID. The data is the same. Now the book ID, 1001, 1002, this information here does not appear in this table and does not appear in this table. So we don't need to link um, this field. Now let's go to the last table. We have the shop code, ABE123. And as you can see, this can be linked to the shop field here. So for three tables, we only need two links. So this is a typical exam question. So create a one-to-many relationship as a link between a builder ID field in a builder's table and a builder ID field in the yachts table. We're going to be looking at this example here. So to make the relationship, close down the tables. We don't need to have them open. Let's look at the PowerPoint now. Um, we need to click on Database Tools, Relationships. So if I click on Database Tools, click on Relationships. We need to add both tables, okay? And then we can click on Close. And let's look at the question. So create a one-to-many relationship as a link between a distributor code, code field in a distributor table. So this code field in this distributor table and a distributors field in a cars table. So we want to link it to this code here from this table here to the distributor field in a cars table. So if we go back to access, you first select a primary key and you click and you drag it onto the distributor field from the cars table. Now for the evidence document, you'd have to print screen this box here showing a one-to-many relationship between the two different fields. And then also you can print screen showing this link here. So the di distributor go code from the distributors table linking to the distributor from the cars table. Okay. Now in some exam questions, they may ask you to add new records okay so if you were to add a new record you go down to the bottom and you simply start typing in to add the new record some exam papers they may ask you if we go back to the powerpoint 
to update the record for these cars by entering them the following data. Okay, so the best way of doing this is to filter using the primary key. So let's say, for example, we want to update this record here. Okay, so I'm just going to click on uh, the filter tab, text filters contains. If I type in, you would obviously would have to type it in, and it finds that particular record. Now, maybe a case we have to change some details. Okay, so the discount applied might be 10. Um, this is actually a slightly different question. So let's, for example, change the color to from blue to red. Okay, and the engine size to 1300, for example. So once you've updated the details, what you can do is clear the filter. So in this case, we have to find the particular record. There's no point going through this, all the VINs and trying to find something specific. It's best to click on a filter and then you can find a record, you can update some details and then you can clear the filter. Okay. Now we're going to make a drop down menu to create the drop down menu you have to select the table and then go to design view then you have to select the field and select for the data type lookup wizard then you have to select I will type in the values I want and then you type in the options given in the question paper then you can click tick this box to limit to a list which means you can't type anything else according to apart from what we have here so let me go to my table so it's, it's going to be this database here I've got a table open if I click on design view location I need to select the lookup wizard I will type in the values I want next and then we can start typing in the values shown here so Cornwall Ireland, Scotland, Wales and France, Scott, okay make sure you're writing the details exactly as it appears on the paper, tick this box, so this is a lookup validation and this will ensure no other data can be entered apart from the options in the drop down menu, click on finish, yes I want to save the changes, and as you can see we've got the different options here now for the evidence what you need to do is take three print screens okay so you can show the first print screen that you've ticked this box to limit to list the second print screen if I go to access again design view okay and then if I select the field location click on lookup you can show the, the only the locations listed in the drop down menu can be entered so we can take a print screen of this box here okay and if we go back to my PowerPoint then you can actually take down the print screen of the um, drop down so the drop down was here let me just go to the correct database you can take a final print screen here We're now going to have a look at data validation. So data validation checks whether the data entered fulfills specific criteria to ensure the data is valid. Different validation techniques can be used on different fields depending on the type of data required for each field. So we can have a presence check to check if the data has been entered, so if it's present. So we can type in for the validation rule is not null. We can have a range check to check the data has been entered in the correct range, for example a year, uh, year 70, year 12. Length check to check if the item of text is too short or too long. A type check to check if the type of data entered is correct. Letters, no letters in a numeric field, for example. And a format check to check if the data has been entered in the correct format. So, for example, date. So, two characters for day, two characters for month, and then four characters for year. So, let me show you the example database I've set up here. So, I've set up validation rules on some of these fields here so we have a table here to record students records so the first validation rule I've set up is on a student ID 
So to set up a validation rule, you go to design view, you click on a field, and the first validation I have is I've got two zeros and three letters. So the student ID, if I click here, I can't type in any letters for the first two characters, it should be numbers. Then it should be three letters. Okay. If I try typing in a number, it just makes a noise and doesn't allow me. So this is the first validation is to ensure the correct details are entered. So let me enter in my name. Okay. If I go to house, now the validation rule set for house is we can only accept bell or query or house or write. Okay. And it will give me this message here. You have to enter the correct house name. So if I type in anything else, it gives me this message here. So let me type in um, Bell. Okay, now for the year group, the validation rule it has to be less than or equal to 12. Okay, so if I type in year 13, it's giving me this message here. So you can only enter year which is let which is 12 or less okay and then for the date of birth the validation rule is the hashtags automatically appear but is more than or equal to the first of the first 2006 so you can only enter a date after 2005 so if i try changing this date so let me type in the date here 01 01 2005 it will not let me okay so you can only enter a date after 2005 so let me change that to 2006 and then for number of subjects we can say the validation rule is between 4 and 10 so I can't type 11 or can't type 3 so if I type in 3 that should not be accepted so you can only enter a value between 4 and 10 if I type in 11, that should not be accepted. If I type in 4, 4 has been accepted. If I type in 10, 10 has been accepted. And anything in the middle. So if you were in a test table, typing in 2 or 3 or 11 or 12 would be abnormal values. Extreme values would be 4 or 10. And normal values would be anything in the middle. Okay, so that's validation. Now we're going to move on to creating... A data entry form so a data entry form is used to enter new records into a database table the form is a more user-friendly way to enter new records so a data entry form may include tick boxes drop-down lists navigation aids to go backwards and forwards an on-screen form should have appropriate spacing for each field so for example a book ID if I zoom in a little bit more does not need to be as long as a book name. The book name will have more characters, so the field length is longer. Clearly defined input area for each field, as you can see here. Easy to read fonts and sizes. A sensible font color and background color. Drop down lists and tick boxes to make it easier to enter data. Nothing should be overlapping, and there should be navigation aids to allow the user to go forwards and backwards. So a typical exam question could be create a data entry form which will include all of the fields from the AD sports table. So if we go to that table or database, this was uh, the table. So we have to make a data entry form for this table here as course code activity type. So I've made one earlier. As you can see, the field lengths have been appropriately spaced. We've got um, the drop down menu and we've got navigation buttons to go backwards and forwards. And then I can click on this button to add a new record. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the form again. So to make the form, you go to create at the top and then you select form wizard. Then you select the correct table and select all the fields and then next and finish. In design view, we can then format um, the form. So we can format the field lengths, we can include buttons. So let's go ahead and make this um, data entry form now. So let me delete the one I had. To create the form, you click on create form wizard. We have to choose this table here. So let me double check the question again. AD sports table. Yep, that's the right table. Select all the fields. Next, next, 
and you can put a suitable name in if you want so data entry form now we can have a look at this so remember the one we saw was correctly formatted field lengths were according to the number of characters in that particular field so the course code does not have to be so long and we also had navigation buttons as well so the first thing you sh should do after you created a form is format the field lengths so they're appropriately sized so the course code does not have to be so big you can press control to select more than one field at one time Location, we can make it a little bit smaller as well. Okay, let's have a look. So, this looks a little bit better. So, I'm just going to go forward just to make sure all of the information is showing, which it is. Right, I also want to ensure the information is aligned on the left in each field. So, I highlight by pressing control all the fields, click on the left alignment after. You click on home and then go to left alignment. If we go to view, you'll see all the information on the left hand side. You can also move the fields up slightly. Okay. Right, and then if I press control again, I can make the titles for each field. Um, change the formatting so the stand out so we can make them bold we can change the text color to black and maybe the shading of the box as well so maybe like a light blue okay so what I've done so far is I've adjusted the field lengths um, so they're more appropriate so the course code does not have to be so long it's better to have it like this um, the activity and type the field lengths are slightly longer because there's more characters in these particular fields and also formatted the field headings as well or the titles for each field the next thing I'm going to do if I go to my PowerPoint is insert navigation aids okay so you can insert navigation aids by clicking on this button here so if you go to design so the first button I'm going to create is the, is the button which will take me to the very first record so as you can see, look at the picture as a clue. Sometimes you can have the text or the picture. I think in this case, the picture is more suitable. So now the second button I'm going to include will be the button which would take me to the last record. So again, look at the picture for the clue. So sometimes the exam question might ask you to include additional features to the um, drop, um, data entry form to make it more easier to use so the navigation buttons is something useful to do so now we're going to have buttons just go backwards and forwards between records so previous record next next finish next record and then we're going to have buttons to open and close so we'll have one to close the form instead actually this time we can show the text because it's easier to understand rather than looking at the icon. So close form, yeah, we want that. And the last button we can have now is maybe to add a new record. And you can choose additional buttons if you wish. Again, it's easier to include a text. And then what you can do, you can just basically improve the formatting, make sure the buttons are prop properly spaced out. So now we can go forwards, backwards, go to the first record, last record. If you want to close the form, save the changes. If you want to add a new record, you can click here and then you can type in the information for the new record. So if we go to the next slide, so you see this is a question created data entry form. Okay, add the following record, then you just simply type in the information into the form. And then, so let's start actually, let me just type it in. So, CO, I think I did it previously, so this record would already exist. So, we can just write in something else. Um, okay, but obviously, what you would do 
for the sake of the evidence you'd write in this information here then you'd have to take a print screen of the form showing a record has been added into your evidence document. Okay, now we're going to be looking at a combo box. A combo box is like a drop down menu, but um, in this case, in the November 2017 exam, we have to do it slightly different to what we did previously to make a drop down menu. Okay, so the first part of the task is to create a data entry form. So I've already created a data entry form for this question. Okay, include all the fields from the cruise tables, which we've included. Allow the user to select the linear code from a drop down list. So if I was making a drop down list, I would go to that table table. And before I made the actual form, I would have done this lookup wizard. But this would not be possible because this field here is part of a relationship. It's a primary key which is linked to another field in another table. So if I go to lookup wizard, it's going to give me this error message. Okay? So what we can do, we can basically link this field to the information in this table here. So in this table here, we've got uh, the liner codes from going from 1 to 21. We don't want to link it to this table because the liner codes are being repeated. So we want to link it to this table here where each value only appears once. So if I close down all of the information, open up the data entry form, if I go to design view, let me go to my PowerPoint first of all. These are the steps we have to take. We have to right click on the field, select change to and select the combo box. Then we'll have to go to property sheet, select data and select the source of the combo box. Then we'll select a table from where the data will come from and then the field. So if I go to access, I want to apply the combo box onto this field here. So I right click change to and a select combo box okay then you have to go to property sheet if you can't see property sheet just click on this tab here click on data go to source and when you see the three dots you want to select uh, click on the three dots now we want to select the table from which the information will come from so it's going to be from this table here and we want to select the liner code we can click on run to see the options, so it's basically 1 to 21, nothing's been repeated. And then we can click on um, close, yes I want to save the changes. And you can see there's a drop down menu now, so if I click on view, you can see the drop down menu. And you may have to evidence this into your exam um, or into your evidence document. Okay, so we've come to the end of this part, I will finish this. Um, video off in a second part. We will be looking at queries and reports and the use of different search criteria. Okay, so thank you for uh, your time. Please show support to this channel. Please share and like this video and please comment below and also um, please subscribe. Thank you again for your time.